Hello everyone, welcome to Stisa This Much. This is Aditya, and today we will discuss the top three questions on fire suppression system. Right? We will look at the top three questions on this topic. But before looking at these questions, let us quickly revise this topic. All right? So we have already co co covered in depth about the fire suppression system the, the methods the various methods we have already covered in our lectures but let me try to give you a summary of this topic all right so before looking at these questions let us quickly revise this topic so we have discussed that fire suppression system will activate when it detects any heat or smoke in the room whenever it detects any heat or heat or smoke in the room the fire suppression system will be activated fire suppression system could be gaseous chemical based chemical based if you want you can also note it down or water based or water based right so uh, the first one which we have discussed was co2 carbon dioxide based fire suppression system illegal illegal if if human beings are present okay so it is extremely dangerous for human health extremely worst dangerous for human health right and illegal if human beings are present in that particular room right but best for unmanned or unstaffed facilities all right so one of the question in the exam was asked on this topic on this one line right co2 it is it is although dangerous for human health but it is best for unmanned or unstaffed facilities Alright, so I am, I am kind of, you know, disclosing the answer here itself. But anyways, you know, you have to understand one thing. You, you know what? I have seen some students, you know, what they say is that they want to always be in the exam mode. And they feel that if they know all the concepts, you know, they'll be easily be able to solve any question. But it doesn't work like that. You know, I, I always say in my lectures that there are two things, concepts and question answers. You must understand both things you must understand the concepts but also you must understand how to read a question how to interpret a question how to analyze a question right your reading skills is very much important when you are tr when you're trying to solve the question answers in fact you know what uh let me discuss you know and I'm, 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 i'll be just taking two minutes of time i'm sorry about that but you know let me discuss something very important here see you know what uh there is a reason why justification is given right below a, 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 a right below any question in the official qe so if you open official qe of isaka you will find that the justifications and the answer right below the question you know uh, you have to understand this thing that isaka doesn't want you to be always in the exam mode some people feel that you know they 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 need to be always in the exam mode right so if if they understand a particular concept or a particular topic they can they can answer any questions but honestly it doesn't work like that it it doesn't work like that because if you are solving any question for the first time you know even if the answer is in front of you it doesn't matter what your approach should be is that you have to understand you have to go backwards in the reverse way 
you know we have discussed about the reverse engineering similarly you have to go in the reverse way even if the answer is in front of you you have to understand why this is the answer or on what basis or what was the background intention of this particular question why this particular answer was chosen and not the other ones right so this is how your approach should be so uh, what i was saying is that you know so there's a reason why they have given justification right below all the questions you know they could have given the ju justifications and the answer as a separate book or in the end but you have to understand this thing why they have given answers and justifications below each and every question in the official qa book the reason is that isaka doesn't want the students to be in the exam mode all the time rather they expect you to you know uh, understand the question not to solve the question there's a difference between solving a question and understanding a question right they don't want you to you know solve a question right they they expect from you to understand a question right so that's the reason justification is right below so that answers it is completely fine even if even if it's front of you right what matters is that are you able to understand the logic are you able to understand the background intention of the particular question so that is important right i hope that makes sense so uh don't feel that uh you know uh okay sir has already uh told the answer you know i i i wanted to solve that particular question by myself you know because some people feel that uh they they want to solve all the questions by themselves and when they make mistakes they feel depressed but the reality is that the reality is that you know whoever clears the exam in the first attempt everyone make mistakes in the uh, you know while while looking at the question answer for the first time right so it is completely normal right so you have to look at the answer and then go in the reverse way right even this works okay so all right then you know and and some people say that it it means that we have to mug up the answers no it doesn't mean like that i'm not saying you to mug up the answers right mugging up is different and looking at the answer and thinking you know how to so you you behind each and every question there is a logic right so this is what we we discuss in our lectures right in our sisa uh, entire lectures this is what our focus is right uh, how to you know read and how to interpret uh, lots of varieties of questions right so let me not take much of your time and uh, you know let's uh, finish this summary and let's look at the top three questions also so so the first one is co2 base which is dangerous for human health it is illegal but it is best for unmanned unstaffed facilities right next yeah the next one was halon based gas uh it is banned since 1994 very hazardous to human health and banned the the the, the manufacturing itself is banned right uh next one was fm200 very important one fm200 the safest for environment and the safest for human beings for environment as well as for the human being it's a, it is the safest one and the most preferred option in your exam most commonly used is fm200 right safest for humans most commonly used all right it also has other name i have told you you know they might try to confuse you instead of giving the giving the word fm200 they can give you some other words right some other words are some other words are hepta fluoro propane three words hepta fluoro propane it is nothing but fm200 or or hfc 
227 और एच एफ सी टू ट्वेंटी सेवन ई राइट यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दीज वर्ड्स एच एफ सी हेप्टा फ्लूरो प्रोपेन और एफ एम टू हंड्रेड और एच एफ सी टू ट्वेंटी सेवन और एच एफ सी टू ट्वेंटी सेवन ई राइट द नेक्स्ट वन इज एरगोनाइट right here we have discussed that it is environment friendly environment friendly but but there was some cases reported some cases were some cases were reported in the past for human suffocation right so again it is what not recommended right the next one is just a second yeah all right so the next one is water based the next one is water based all right water based can be water based sprinkler what water based sprinkler why do you have to mention water based when we are discussing about water based i mean when we are discussing about water based why do i have to stress on water based because there is one more kind of water based which is called dry pipe dry pipe sprinkler don't go with the name even though the word used is dry but it is also a part of water based right so what we have discussed here is that in case of water based okay yeah in case of water based water is always present always present in the pipe water is always present in the pipe right and in case of dry pipe in case of dry pipe water is not present but but you know we will have to activate so uh, as soon as heat or smoke gets detected you know as soon as the alarm alarm uh, rings it activates the pump and the water will be released so here in dry pipe the pipe is dry when we say dry pipe the pipe is dry right the water will be released when the alarm rings right so why why do we have two two different things right why do we need dry pipe is because in in countries where the, the there is cold temperature where the temperature goes you know below 0 degrees you know i mean there are so many countries where you know the snow falls and you know the temperature goes you know uh, below 0 degree so in in these countries right you have to understand that if the water is already present in the pipe there is a there is a risk of that water freezing right so when the uh, if the water is freezed it won't be released at the right time so if there is an emergency need if there is a need if, if there, there's a fire and and you require this thing at that time it might not work if the water is freezed inside right so that's why we keep the pipe dry there is one more reason there is one more reason in case of water based you have to understand that there is a risk of leakage of water 
there there is always a risk of leakage so let's say if you have critical systems in that particular room right critical machines critical servers so there is a risk of damage to the equipments there is a risk of damage to the machines right there is risk of damage to the computer so so uh, if there is water leakage it, it it can be risky right so uh, this is the reason uh, we go with the dry pipe right so it is water based but you know uh, the pipe is dry the water will be released when there is a need right let me note it down yes all right so here the risk is leakage and damage leakage and damage to systems cool and here cold temperatures risk that water could freeze inside the pipe and may create blockage and may create blockage in emergencies in emergencies right water doesn't flow water doesn't flow until alarm activates the pump right also also no leakage issues right so i hope everyone have revised this topic so let us now look at the top three questions on this topic all right so let's start and let us look at these top three questions now these questions are no more difficult for you because you have watched my lectures right so let's look at the first question which of the following is the most appropriate which of the following is the most appropriate and effective fire suppression method for an unstaffed computer room option number a water sprinkler option number b fire extinguishers option number c carbon dioxide option number d dry pipe the answer is the answer is the answer is the answer is carbon dioxide right now here the keywords are unstaffed computer room correct unmanned unstaffed computer room you have to go with the option carbon dioxide right let's look at the next question now these questions are no more difficult for you which of the following fire suppression systems need to be combined with an automatic switch to shut down the electricity supply in the event of activation read very carefully which of the following fire suppression system needs to be combined fire suppression system okay needs to be combined combined with what automatic switch to shut down automatic shutdown of the electricity supply in the event of activation in the event of activation what should be activated fire suppression system when it will be activated when there is what heat or smoke 
when there is heat or smoke fire alarm will be uh, ringing and fire suppression system will be activated when it will be activated it needs to combine with one more activity what is that one more activity that one more activity is what shutdown of electricity why do we need that why do we need to shut down the electricity when when there is release of water because water is a good conductor of electricity so so there is a risk of what electric shocks all right so so this is the reason so so when a particular fire suppression system will be activated it needs to be combined it needs to be combined with what with 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 what with automatic what shutdown of the electricity so the answer is answer is dry pipe a difficult question difficult question right here the answer is dry pipe and not fm200 90% of the people 90% of the people in the exam have gone with option number a fm200 right i mean i'm, I'm just assuming that okay so here the answer is not option number a many people may go with option number a in the exam in the exam if you don't read the question properly if you don't understand the question properly you might end up choosing option number a which is fm200 but the right answer is option number b dry pipe right option number b is the answer dry pipe because see now they, see how beautifully they have drafted the question you know they, they if if they wanted they could have used the word water based sprinkler but 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 you know in in that case uh, you know i mean most of the students would have been able to guess the answer right because they they would have looked at a word shutdown of the electricity and you know they might have got the answer water based because of electricity but how beautifully they have used the word dry pipe and if you don't understand you know dry pipe it, it is also a part of water based uh, uh, sprinkler system in that case you know definitely you won't be able to solve this question you know most of the people will go with option number a fm200 right but here the answer is dry pipe so at times at times the, the the questions might look easy but but you know you have to be very very careful you have to have the best reading skills and you know understanding of the concepts that's why both things are required you know and that's the reason of me giving you the lecture you know initially so i i know that you know uh, some people may not like these lectures in 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 the chat but these exam tips and tricks are very important you know i i get lots of messages you know saying that uh, you know when when they uh, used all those tricks and tips you know they were they were easily able to clear the exam and that's why i always say everyone to uh, even watch our success stories you know which we put in our uh, youtube channel because it gives you the experiences of you know many students you know what difficulties they have faced and you know what lessons you can learn from these people all right let's look at the next question question number 3 the primary benefit to using a dry pipe fire suppression system rather than a wet pipe system is that a dry pipe system disperses dry chemical suppressants no has a decreased risk of leakage yes option number c allows more time to about release of the, of the suppressant no is more effective at suppressing flames no the answer is it is having decrease decreased leak, uh, risk of leakage right i hope everyone have understood all right thank you